Amongst my recent uh, delivery from China of random tat were two of these dual um, cell USB power banks. And one of them is notably more compact than the other. And this one is very much styled on the traditional single cell power bank. So taking a look at this one first. The size of the area in it for things like batteries, the, the space of the battery holder, is excruciatingly tight, really pushes the metal at the end, which is just kind of loose, up very close to the metal work on the circuit board. And the only thing that seems to hold that away is these bits in the lid, so you probably have to try and hook it behind that when you close the lid over on it. It does have an LED in it, which only lights now and then, because here's another thing. The positive connections don't really allow for heat shrink sleeve cur curling around the end of the battery pack. It, it really needs a pip sticking out. It's also a very, very tight fit. Uh, it won't take protected cells like many of the others do. But anyway, this one has an LED in it with a little switch. And I'm going to try and get that to light by rattling the cell about and pushing the... Yeah, there it goes. And that, it turns out, is not using the 5 volt boost converter. All it's doing is connecting it directly across the cells with a 10 ohm resistor in series. Reasonable enough feature. I don't like this one. I think they've skimped in the size too much. And I don't like the fact that the battery terminal here doesn't have much support. So, fail for that one, I'm afraid. This one, on the other hand, very similar to this case. It's even got the same style of text on it. This one does have much better battery support. And... Again, sadly, you can't put the protected cells in. They just won't fit. It's just too tight. Um, however, I thought this one just contained pretty much the same circuit board as the single cell power banks, but when I took it out anyway, I discovered that it's got a lot more on it. It's maybe one of the older styles. It's not using that really common chip, the FM6316FE type chip, which uh, this one is using that. Um, this one uses a selection of chips including D1, uh, DW01Z, or DW01Z as you might see in America, which is a protection chip, and it's also got an 8205 dual FET. So there's a possibility that this one may actually not just protect up to the 42 volt uh, charging threshold, like this one does, this one may properly turn it off completely when it charges down to about 3 volts. Um, the other ones don't. They kind of have this slight design weakness that lets current trickle through, even though the 5 volt boost converter is switched off, it lets current trickle through the, the booster circuitry. So that's quite interesting. I kind of like this one. It's very chunky and solid, and it seems to really support the batteries as well. But uh, again, it's just for unprotected cells. But having said that, it looks as though it's got the, all the protection you need built in. I'm going to have to put that to the test though. Oh, here's something else I noticed. While I was taking the little pink USB one to bits, there was a little bit of yellow plastic on the top of there, and I thought that must be a spacer, but there was nothing in the lid that pressed down it, so it was just a random bit of yellow plastic stuck to the top of that contact, and I couldn't work out what it was for. This one also has a little bit of yellow plastic, spongy plastic, stuck to the top of the case, again not making contact with anything and I reckon these might be little um, VC iPads, volatile corrosion inhibitors. I'm not 100% sure um, because a VC iPad is uh, a little pad that's impregnated with a solution that in storage it gives off a very fine vapour that basically coats all the circuit board and everything in the thing with a sort of almost like one molecule of oil and that protects it from corrosion so I'm wondering if it's an anti-corrosion device or it's something else I'm really not sure about that it's quite intriguing I'll have to investigate